Hey there, it's Garrett Biss with Valiant Path once again. Before our upcoming call, I just want to share a little bit more about what Valiant Path is and really a little bit of my own journey or my own story that brought me to this place where I'm working with other veterans to support them in their recovery and help them get to that best place in their life. So in 2014, I was struggling. I was at that rock bottom or really dark place. I was using a lot of substances, a lot of behaviors to try to numb the pain and fill the void that I was experiencing as I was facing that transition from active duty. And when I got to the point where I kept thinking about and couldn't stop thinking about taking my own life, I realized something needed to change. And that's when I started to reach out and look for some guidance to help get to a better place. So over the last couple of years, what I've learned is that the, we as humans really have three fundamental human needs. These are This is what separates us from all the animals, and these are unique needs that humans have that are really required to allow us to live a good version of our life, to experience joy, happiness, fulfillment, to be engaged in things that are meaningful. These are three fundamental needs that we have. The first need is for connection. So humans are tribal beings. We need connection. We need bonding to other creatures in order to survive. You know, there's no one of us that could survive all on our own for very long. We need to be connected with other people, whether that's in your unit, whether that's in a family, whether that's in a community. We need those connections. We need to be part of that tribe in order to survive. And what being connected means is that when we feel that connection or reciprocated connection, that this says that we are uh, we are valued. We are a part of a tribe. We're a part of a community. Other people have our back. We have other people's backs. And this is one. Uh, this is a really fundamental element of living a good life or living a fulfilling life. The second thing that we need is authenticity. So if connection is saying like, hey, you're welcome, you're, you're, you can be a part of our tribe, what authenticity says or our ability to be authentic is very important because this allows us to be who we are and know that we are lovable and acceptable just as we are. Sharing what we want to share, sharing the thoughts that we have, the desires, asking for our needs to be met, whatever that looks like. We are in a place where we can do that. The third thing, the third fundamental need that we have is for a sense of meaning. And we need a sense of meaning as in our ability to endure suffering or live through hard and challenging times. Uh, there's a, a gentleman, Dr. Viktor Frankl, who lived through and survived the Holocaust. And he writes extensively about the, the will to meaning or having meaning in our life. And what he says is that meaning in life is our capacity to endure suffering. And in fact, suffering no longer be, is no longer suffering once there's a meaning attached to it. So you think about some hard and challenging times in your life, you were able to live through that. You were able to endure that suffering or that challenge because you had a strong sense of meaning, whether that's the pain that you feel in the gym because it has a sense of meaning that it's good for your health and it's helping your body go stronger, or whether it's the the pain and the suffering that you experience through a deployment, being away from family, being away from normal routines, that pain and that suffering is endurable because we have connection and because we have a meaning associated with that sacrifice that we're making. So what I've realized is that when veterans transition out of the military, we lose the ability to fulfill those three fundamental human needs. That sense of connection that we have, that brotherhood or that sisterhood that we have will never look the same with the tribes that we have outside of the military. You know, when we're in the military, being connected with somebody else, it might look like, hey, man, I got your back. And if, you know, if shit really hits the fan, I'm going to be there for you. And if it all if it comes to it, I'll sacrifice my own well-being to ensure yours. That's a level of acceptance and connection that we just don't experience in the civilian world. You know, in the, the best case scenario, we have people that are friends that will, you know, that will endure some hard times for us, maybe help us run an errand, do some things for us. But that same sense of connection or that bonding, that brotherhood, that sisterhood that we experience in the, in the military, we never experience that again. And the next thing is the authenticity piece. So every veteran I've ever talked to said when they got out of the military, they felt different. They felt weird. They felt alone. They felt like they couldn't show up as they were. They realized very quickly that the values, the beliefs that we have in the military don't always reconcile. They don't jive with the civilian world. And what this forces a lot of us to do is instead of showing up as we are and saying what we're thinking or sharing the things that are on our mind or asking for what we need, we end up putting on a mask so that we can be accepted by those around us. And I remember many times where I could be surrounded by friends, by family. I could be in public places surrounded by other people, but 
but I always felt alone. I always felt isolated. And a lot of that was because I was constantly wearing this mask. Like I didn't want people to look at me weird. Like I was defective or like there was something wrong with me. So instead of showing or showing up as I truly was, I would wear a mask and I would hide those feelings, hide those thoughts. And it led to feelings of isolation, feelings of shame, feelings of guilt, feelings like there was something wrong with me. And that began to deteriorate my sense of self-worth and my self-esteem. The last meaning that I mentioned was the, the last fundamental need that I mentioned was the need for meaning. So for those of us that served the military, there's very few things that somebody can do where they can derive such a sense of meaning of going and putting ourselves, sacrificing our well-being and putting ourselves in harm's way or enduring long, uh, long deployments, enduring hard training cycles for the value or for the benefit of what we're protecting back home. And for a lot of us, most people will never experience or replace that strong sense of meaning. More importantly, the meaning that we have from that, that during that period of time in active duty, it helps us to endure that suffering or those hard times that we go through. And what we find, what I found personally, what a lot of veterans find is when we transition out of the military, we don't have that meaning pulling us up, but we still have the, the, the downs, the pain and the suffering and the hard times of life that pull us down. And this can create a downward spiral that continues to pull us into a darker and a worse place. So as we transition out of the military, we lose those three fundamental human needs or the way that we can meet those fundamental human needs changes. That's what leads a lot of us to those feelings of isolation, depression, anxiety, senses of overwhelm, feeling lost, feeling like things don't make sense, feeling you know that this void inside or this emotional pain that we don't know how to discharge in any way. So we turn to substances or we turn to behaviors to help mask that pain, to numb that pain or to fill a void with something that's not positive and it's not helping us get to a better place. And if you've, if any of that resonates with you, then you felt the consequences of that. I know for myself, I would feel the worst part of that was every day that I lost, that I wasn't actively engaged in something. I felt like it was a day that I was wasting. I knew that I was here for a reason. I knew that I was put, you know, that after the military, my life would still have a sense of purpose, but I couldn't think of, I couldn't deal with the thought that I didn't know what that was and I felt like a real failure and I, every day that I didn't have that sense of meaning or didn't have that sense of direction or purpose in my life, it felt like a day that I was wasting. I was really ashamed of that. So this got me even more scared. So these are the three fundamental needs that we have. And this is really what Valiant Path was developed to help reconnect us and help fill these three needs. So Valiant Path, and we'll talk about this a lot more on the call, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions about it. Valiant Path combines three different elements that are critical for helping us get to a better place or get to that place that we want to be. The first element of Valiant Path is group coaching and group mentorship. This really helps stimulate that sense of connection. It helps us bond with and connect with other veterans, other people that have served so that we can find and feel that safety and that familiarity in a place where we can share the thoughts, we can share the growth that we're experiencing, we can share our wins, we can share some of our troubles and our setbacks. But when you get this group coaching or when you get this group uh, mentoring, it's really a very powerful way to find that sense of connection, share our wins where we can build on some of the growth that we're experiencing. We can do it in a safe, supportive environment. We can get that accountability from others that want the best for us so that we can all move together and move much more quickly and make greater progress. So that's a really fundamental or really valuable part of Valiant Path. The next part of Valiant Path is something that I've created over the last seven years. It's a science-backed curriculum that brings in the best of positive psychology, of the, of the science of human flourishing, and a lot of elements that help us find the, you know, it's a positivity-based and, and strengths-based approach to making progress in our life and experiencing that better version of ourselves from pulling up back that shell or peeling back those layers uh, and helping us reveal that beautiful and the very powerful and strong version of us that's inside. This whole uh, this curriculum it goes through five different phases or five different elements. First, building a sense of emotional resilience, finding that sense of meaning and purpose and inviting joy back into our life, identifying our strengths and engaging with those things that are most important to us in a way that's most meaningful, showing up, being present with those that we love, showing up and contributing the best that we have to the projects that we're engaged in. Um, finding that sense of meaning and purpose by following that joy and, and, uh, and creating the achievements or goals and plans to experience those achievements and experience that progress that we want in our life. This is a fundamental recipe that helps us experience the joy, the happiness, the fulfillment, the success, 
And those things that maybe you remember in your life when you felt like you're really showing up, you're really providing value, you're really loving the way that your life experience was, the connections that you had, the bonding, the contribution that you made, all of it, it will get you back to that place extremely quickly. And then the last element of Valiant Path is a, uh, a special emotional processing system that we use that helps us tap into some very hard or very bad uh, limiting emotions. So anything that we have experienced in our life that we don't properly address or process at the time can limit us. Of course, there's things that maybe we experienced in the military that are a part of that. But as I found out through my own journey, there were a lot of things, emotions that I hadn't processed from my childhood, which then were exacerbated by other experiences that I had later on. So through this very unique, this new age or this uh, pioneering emotional processing system, we have the ability to go back and release some of that stuck energy or those stuck emotions that are holding us back so that we can make that progress that we want. And this in and of itself is very uh, is fundamental to and very revolutionary part of this healing and this growth journey that we'll, that we'll embark on together. So I just want to share a little bit more about Valiant Path. During our call that's coming up, we're gonna, I'm going to get some opportunity to hear about your unique uh, journey and the struggles and the challenges that you face. And then together, we'll come to, we'll make a decision as to whether Valiant Path seems like it's a right fit for you. And if it is, and, and it seems like the right fit, and it seems like the right time, then we'll extend an invitation for you to join us in the Valiant Path. And if it's not for any reason, then we'll come to a conclusion together about that as well. And if that's how you feel, or if that's how we feel after talking about your situation, then I'll be, uh, be sure to do my best to point you in the direction of any tools, any resources, anything that I've come across in my journey, or anything that I know about that could be that best uh, next step for you. Either way, I can't wait to see you on the call, learn more about your story, get connected a little bit and share anything I can to help you make that progress that you want. As somebody that served our military, you deserve to experience the life, uh, the best life, the best version of your life, experiencing the joy, experiencing the happiness and not to be troubled by or held back by some of those transition, uh, those challenges from your transition or some of those unmet needs that you're experiencing now after you've left active duty. Appreciate you checking out this video and I will see you soon on our upcoming call.